This is a video lesson for Module 5, Lesson 12 and 13. The learning target for both of these lessons is I can reason using benchmarks to compare two fractions on the number line. And what we mean by using benchmarks is that we're going to be using fractions that we have a pretty good confidence of where they fall on the number line, most commonly fractions like one half and one whole, to help us figure out where other fractions might fall in relation to those fractions. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into our first problem and I can show you what I mean. So in problem one here, uh, I'm going to be showing how you would compare these three fractions, 5 twelfths, 3 fourths, and 7 eighths using a number line. And so I already have a number line set up down below and I have already included a few benchmarks. So I have 0, 1 half, and 1. So we're going to be using uh, these benchmarks on the number line to help us place approximately where uh, these three fractions up above would be found. So I'm actually going to start with the fraction that has the largest units, which is 3 fourths. So I'm going to be starting by taking a look and thinking about 3 fourths. And I'm going to be using these benchmark fractions. So if I look at 1 half, I know that one half, if I were to decompose it into fourths, would be the same as two fourths. So one half, I can think of it as two fourths as well. So if I think about one half as two fourths, and then I look at my fraction I am putting on the number line three fourths, I know that that's going to only be one fourth bigger than two fourths. So I know it's going to be one fourth further along the number line here. So I'm going to go ahead and partition uh, this number line into fourths here. And I know it's going to be one-fourth larger, so three-fourths is going to be right here, approximately right here, okay? So I reasoned using the one-half and thought to myself, well, one-half is the same as two-fourths, and three-fourths is only one-fourth larger than two-fourths, so I know it's going to be about one-fourth past the one-half point, okay? So that was three-fourths. I have an approximate location for three-fourths on the number line. The next fraction I'm going to look at is the next largest unit, which is 7 eighths. So when I look at 7 eighths, I notice that it's very close to 8 eighths. And I know, of course, that 8 eighths is the same as one whole. So I'm thinking of, I'm reasoning using this benchmark of one whole. And I know that one whole is the same as 8 eighths. So 7 eighths must be 1 eighth less than one whole. So I'm going to go ahead and partition the number line now into eighths. And let's see if I can find the spot for seven eighths. So here's eight eighths, uh, which is equal to one. So seven eighths would approximately be right here on the number line. So I can already tell that three fourths is smaller than seven eighths because it is further to the left down the number line. So for the last fraction here, 5 twelfths, once again, I'm going to reason using one of my benchmarks. I'm going to be using 1 half as the benchmark. And I'm going to be thinking about, well, what is 1 half decomposed into twelfths? Well, rewritten into twelfths, 1 half would be 6 twelfths. And that is pretty close to 5 twelfths. But it is actually 1 twelfth less than 6 twelfths. So it's going to be 1 twelfth to the left of one half. So since my number line is already decomposed into eighths, um, it's kind of tricky for me to decompose the whole number line into twelfths. So I'm going to kind of eyeball one twelfth. And I know that one twelfth is going to be approximately about right here. And so I move one twelfth to the left. And so that's going to be where five twelfths falls on the number line. So using this number line here, I can see that five twelfths is less than 3 fourths, which is less than 7 eighths. So I compared all three of those fractions using the number line. So we can use the same strategy for fractions that fall between 0 and 2. So fractions that end up being larger than 1 um, by still using common benchmarks. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using the benchmarks 0, 1, and 2 to compare 7 eighths and 6 fourths on the number line. So just like in the first problem, I'm actually going to start with the larger units. So which whatever fraction has the larger units here. And in this case, fourths are larger than eighths. So I'm going to start with 6 fourths. 
So to think about the approximate location of 6 fourths on the number line, I'm actually going to use one of my benchmarks to find an approximate location. So I'm going to actually look at one hole right here on the number line, and I know that if I represented one hole in fourths, it would be 4 fourths. And so since the fraction I am looking for is 6 fourths, and where that falls in the number line, I know that that would be 2 fourths past 4 fourths on the number line. So I know that 2 fourths is actually the same as 1 half, and so I would know that 6 fourths would fall halfway between 1 and 2, about right here. So to plot 6 fourths on the number line, I would say that it's approximately right here, between 1 and 2. Now, looking at 7 eighths, I'm once again going to use the benchmark of one whole. And so if I represented one whole in eighths, it would be 8 eighths. And so I already know that 7 eighths is going to be less than one whole. In fact, it's going to be 1 eighth less than one whole. So I'm going to partition the space between 0 and 1 into eighths. So that would be 8 equal parts. And I know that 7 eighths is only 1 eighth less than 1 whole. So 7 eighths, 7 eighths is going to fall right there on the number line. So because 7 eighths is further left or closer to 0 than 6 fourths is, I know that 7 eighths is less than 6 fourths. So you can see that when we think about and we reason with our benchmarks, it makes it a lot easier to figure out where these fractions fall on the number line and thus help us figure out which one is larger than the other one when we compare. So let's move on to problem three here where it's going to throw a new wrinkle into our problem solving ability. So problem three asks us to compare 6 fourths and 11 tenths without a number line. So we're not going to be drawing a number line for this problem, but what we are going to continue to do is reason about the size of both of these fractions using benchmarks. So I'm going to start with 6 fourths. So 6 fourths, I'm going to be thinking of 6 fourths as 4 fourths plus 2 fourths. And because I think of it this way because 4 fourths I know is one whole. And then there's just 2 fourths extra. So I pulled out, what I did is I decomposed 6 fourths so that it can pull out one whole, because I know this fraction right here is larger than one whole. And so what that's allowed me to do is that's going to make it a little bit easier to compare, because I'm going to do the same thing with 11 tenths. I'm going to pull out one whole, but this time I'm going to do it in tenths. So I'm going to pull out 10 tenths, and then that's going to leave me with 1 tenth. So I have one whole and one tenth. So now what I'm actually doing is I'm comparing one and two fourths, and I'm comparing that with one and one tenth. And so at this point now, it's pretty simple because I'm using one whole as a benchmark, one whole. And I'm saying, well, one and two fourths is two fourths larger than one whole. And 1 and 1 tenth is only 1 tenth larger than 1 whole. So I know that 2 fourths is larger than 1 tenth. So therefore, 1 and 1 tenth is less than 1 and 2 fourths. So I was using that same reasoning with benchmarks, except for this time I was pulling it out without the number line, and I was using 1 whole as a benchmark. And I found that when I was able to decompose the fractions and pull out one whole like I did right here and right here, it made it a little easier for me to think about the size of the fraction and to compare them effectively. So with that being said, you should be able to uh, answer all the problems in both the Lesson 12 and 13 problem set. But as always, if you get stuck when you're working through these problems, you can always come back and rewatch any parts of the video for the help that you need. Thanks for watching.